Now, that, that team are around 50 nautical miles ahead of us, um, which, given the distance to go and the expected time, two weeks, it's going to take, uh, you know, being honest, it'll take something going wrong with them for us to, to win. Hey folks, a little bit different episode today. This is not a Throwback Thursday episode. This is a brand new episode, and it comes from my other show, Without Compromise. Uh, If you don't know, I've mentioned this a lot, but I work with Athletic Brewing, non-alcoholic craft beer, uh, so we're obviously into crazy ideas. One of our athletes, uh, Dixon McDonald, is taking a team uh, across the Atlantic ocean they are racing a rowboat across the atlantic ocean and we are hearing an update from them and they're at this point uh at three weeks into it at the time of this recording they're a little bit closer now because this was last week we did this uh interview they're rowing across the atlantic and they're in second place on this race right now about 300 miles to go out of 3,000 miles so they're you know nine tenths of the way there and uh, so we're hearing from Todd, who's calling us from satellite phone. First time this has ever happened to me, so it was pretty cool just to hear like what it was like to be out there, what it's like to just right, be right in the middle of it, and uh, to be so far but still have a long way to go. Not not two days after this was recorded, crazy situation happened. One of the other racers, one of the other four racers, his name is Jimmy. He was asleep in the cabin, and these rowboats, if you haven't seen them, they're, they have these little tiny cabins. It's like a little tent on each edge, each end of the boat, and it's just this waterproof compartment that you can put, you know, food and supplies to keep it dry but you can also kind of climb in and and go to sleep get some rest away from the weather and whatnot and uh, Jimmy's just laying there on his back just sleeping on the mattress and then all of a sudden this spike just shoots up right between his legs like a like a 12 inch spike of they couldn't even tell what but just this thing just lodged right came straight through the bottom of the boat and so he's freaking out um, actually, they're not freaking out. That was a very important thing they mentioned. They were very calm, but immediately what started happening was water was pouring into the boat, of course. You know, there's a huge hole in it. And so they started dealing with that, um, cutting off this thing that came in and uh, trying to get it flush with the bottom of the boat so they could, like, put a big patch over it, doing the same thing on the outside of the boat. They got to jump in the ocean, cut it off with a hacksaw. Uh, just crazy, crazy thing they have to deal with. Well, upon further inspection, they come to find out that it is the bill or the nose of a sailfish that literally ran into the boat from the bottom, came up, stabbed straight through the boat, broke off its nose into the onto the boat, and then took off swimming. They don't even know where. It just was so quick and, you know, happened so fast they, they don't even realize what happened. So... They've got this crazy thing to deal with, deal with it just fine, and they were able to get back on the the, the water. No, not off. They were never off the water, but they were able to start rowing again, never losing second place, and really only losing just a little time. So, pretty crazy story, and that happened not long after we talked to Todd. But anyway, I didn't want to uh, overlook that with uh, with this intro. And if you'd like to see some pictures and some videos with it, uh, with that particular story, and also hear their account, uh, go to their Instagram, uh, Latitude35. It's in the show notes. You can look it up. But they are almost at the finish line. They're going to be finishing probably this weekend. So I really encourage you to be following along on their social and also download the app a YB races. It makes it really easy to follow along, see how they're doing, see how many miles are left. Um, but anyway, really cool episode. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. First, I want to thank you for, for calling us. This is a first for me. I've talked to some ocean rowers before, but never during the adventure. This is awesome. H- how are you guys feeling? Yeah, we're uh, we're doing well, thank you. Uh, we are a little over three weeks into into the crossing now, 
Um, and it's been uh, a, a pretty wild experience, to, to say the least. The first couple of weeks were, were definitely trial by fire, as, as we expected. But, uh, but it was, I'd say, uh, relentless is probably the, the word I'd use to describe it. And we had, uh, we had everything that I think you know, Mother Nature and the ocean could throw at us, um, uh, along with a couple of uh, technical issues as well. So it's been, it's been a pretty difficult first three weeks. And we've been a little bit unlucky with the weather. Uh, we haven't had what I think would be typical, you know, trade winds. Um, we've had a lot of days where it's been flat and calm, uh, with very little wind. Uh, so it's very hot and kind of hard work. Uh, we've actually had a, quite a few days with headwinds as well and a, and a couple of storms. So yeah, lots, um, lots has been going on, but morale is, is still pretty high. Um, we are, we're currently sat in in third overall out of all of the boats. There's there's one boat which is in the open class, which is uh, ahead of us. Um, and in the race class, uh, we are currently sat second. Uh, we recently moved into second place over the last couple of days. So yeah, everything's uh, everything's going well. Thank you. Man, I, congratulations! I just saw the uh, the post about being in second, and I've been following you on uh on the tracking at the yt trackers but gosh you know when it, when you're just looking at it from your phone like most of us are you do not get a sense for what's really going on C- can you tell us what it has been like from your perspective of sitting and rowing for two hours is it a countdown until you get to switch off like how, how do you process that you know it's just a, such a crazy time management system for for the rest of us tell us about what that has been like yeah it's very interesting because um you know the, the days actually go very quickly um so in in my mind i i usually split the day up into into three day shifts uh, and then three night shifts and the day shifts go quite fast you know obviously visibility is very good and and uh everyone is kind of talking um the night shifts have been pretty difficult they are getting easier. Um, in the beginning, we had very little uh, moonlight. Uh, and so for the first week, 10 days, we were almost rowing in, com- in complete darkness. Uh, if there was a real uh, sensory deprivation and uh, we were still getting into the rhythm of the two hours rowing, two hours uh, resting. And so, you know, the first week, a lot of, a number of us, in fact, all of us were falling asleep, you know, on the oars at night time. We were so tired. Um, but, uh, but that's got better. Um, uh, at night time, it's definitely a, a bit of a clock watching exercise. Um, during the day, it's, it, it's not too bad. Um, we're each trying to put additional hours on the oars. So as a minimum, we are doing. 12 hours of rowing a day, two hours on, two hours off. Um, but when we feel like it, uh, when we've got the energy, we do um, sometimes jump into the extra seat. There are three rowing positions um, and, and give an additional 20 or 30 minutes at the end of our, at the end of our shift. Um, so, so, yeah. You, you sound great. You sound like you're, you're doing well. H- how far into the journey on you and how far do you have to go? And, and, and what are some of the, I don't know, how, how long do you expect w- it will take the rest of the journey? So, uh, yeah, as I said, we are, I think, on day 23 right now. Um, and a little, three, a little over three weeks uh, into, the, into the crossing. Um, it's been slower than we expected. Um, as I said, we've, ha- we've had a couple of storms. Uh, which which were meant very slow progress, extremely high winds of you know up to forty knots of wind, uh, and some some very large swells and and waves. Uh, you know we had a period uh, where we we nearly capsized a couple of times, uh, so that was um, a little bit hairy, if you like. Um, and so the first kind of three weeks has been has been a slower progress than we thought, um, or at least that we hoped. Um, the next two weeks, uh, we are expecting uh, tailwind uh, from the from the east and northeast, uh, which will help our progress quite a lot. Um, and so, at the moment, our estimate is we we should arrive uh, in Antigua hopefully on the on the 18th of of, uh, of January. Uh, so, two weeks 
day um, is, 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 the, uh, is the hope. Now, I know you're close to some other boats. Are, are you able to see those boats? Is, is, it, is it like how we see on the map, or is it you know, just way too far? You haven't seen anyone. Tell us about that. So we, we have seen, since, since we left Lagomera, um, back on the 12th of December, uh, we saw a few boats uh, as we were leaving Lagomera, and through the night, we could see their, their navigation lights uh, on the horizon. When we woke up on the morning of, of, uh, of day two, uh, on the 13th of December, uh, we, we could see no one, um, and, and you know, we could barely see land. Since then, we have seen two boats, um, and they've both been uh, sailing boats, uh, sailing across the Atlantic. Uh, and, and and I had a conversation with, with one of them uh, over the over the VHF uh, radio. Um, I was in the stern cabin at the time, and and we had a chat with a it was a family from France uh, sailing from Martinique, uh, which was it was great to speak to uh, to someone from the outside world, if you like. Um, so other than that, we haven't seen any boats. Um, we haven't spoken to any other any other boats. The closest boat to us um, in the in, in the race is Team HPS Atlantic. Um, and at one point they were, I think, within around uh, five nautical miles of us. Uh, but because the, because the rowing boats are they are very uh, short and the swells that we're rowing in are typically quite big. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's very difficult to see anyone. Um, so no, we haven't we haven't really seen anyone yet. Um, but uh, fingers crossed, we might see a couple more boats. We've seen some incredible wildlife on I think it was the first Friday um, of the of the race. We were followed by a pod of I think around a thousand dolphins um, for a million hour, which was incredible. Uh, you know they were. They were surfing the waves, uh, which we were as well, and they were jumping up and down all, all, all around, which was which was amazing. Um, the 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 sky at night um, is is incredible. You know the the constellations and the stars are are, are yeah you know, like nothing I've ever seen. Um, and we've spotted a couple of whales as well um, that have kind of popped up uh, just off our stern. Uh, and kind of seen the fin and the and the blowhole, uh, which is which is really cool. Um, so we have seen some wildlife. Hopefully, we'll we'll continue to see more uh, to keep keep moving uh, keep moving west. Todd, that is so cool. I can't imagine how cool it was to see those dolphins in the night sky. I often hear that about these kinds of experience. There's no greater wilderness than the open sea. You want to talk about wilderness? That's a place no one's living. And the fact there's no light pollution, I bet it has been just something to behold. What, what, what can you tell us about uh, what, what you've enjoyed about it or something that you didn't expect that you're uh, really getting from this that, that you didn't know going into it? Um, I think we've all definitely enjoyed uh, taking time away from you know, the typical stresses of, of daily life, um, although it can be pretty monotonous out here. Um, you know, not having access to social media all the time and, you know, obviously uh, taking some time off work is, is quite nice. Um, so, so we've enjoyed that. Um, we've had some great times just chatting, uh, speaking to each other on yours, listening to music. Um, you know, there's been times where we're hardly able to row because we're, <laughs> we're laughing so much. Um, so there's definitely been some, some, some good times. Uh, you also take pleasure in some very simple things. Uh, you know, it might be a, a type of freeze dried food that you like or, or something in our kind of snack packs that we have that we kind of uh, eat each day, um, that you look forward to. Um, so it definitely gives you a bit of a different perspective. Um, no, you're not missing anything on social media, I'll tell you. <laughs> but so, you know, speaking of that, what are you missing? Who are you missing? And wh what are you excited to get back to when this is all uh, finished? Uh, no, I think I think I speak for for the whole team. Everyone misses their you know friends and friends and family and and you know other halves, you know wives and girlfriends. Um, you know, uh, yeah. From from my perspective. I definitely think about uh, you know my fiance and and my my family every day, um, which kind of gets you gets you through the night shift. 
Um, and it's you know, very motivating to mm -hmm. kind of think about getting to, to Antigua and, and being reunited with everyone. So, yeah, I think everyone is everyone's missing um, you know, friends and family quite a lot. We do speak to, to them every, I'd say, four or five days um, when we get a chance. Uh, but you know, in our in our two hours off, uh, you know, you need to uh, eat food, um, get hydrated. Um, you know, we need to check our our navigation, our course, check the batteries, um, clean ourselves. So it doesn't leave a lot of time. Um, and then you obviously trying to sleep and rest as, as well. Um, so we are speaking to the, the family um, when we can. Um, I definitely miss a, a bed. <laughs> And sleeping for longer than an hour and a half, uh, and I think we all could uh, we all could, could do with a, a shower. We are jumping in the water every probably week. We have to clean the hull of the boat uh, to make sure there's kind of no barnacles or kind of growth on on the hull of the boat. So you know when we do that, we kind of lather up with some uh, kind of soap if you like, um, and have a bit of a clean. So I think we're all looking forward to do a shower and a, and a proper bed in in Antigua, where hopefully uh, we'll have friends and family waiting for us yeah i've bathed in the ocean before it's not it's not perfect but if that's all you got it'll do good gracious yeah. did, i was gonna ask you this did y'all do anything special for christmas and new year i you, you spin it out there that's a pretty big day to be out there did, did you do anything yeah so christmas day we we had um <laughs> we we'd been in a in in a kind of school a very kind of uh large school on on christmas eve and dixon and jimmy were were out on on the rowing deck all night uh rowing in some pretty tough conditions i was in the stern captain trying to get us on the right course steering wise and so on christmas eve we we none of us really slept um Jono, uh, Jono was on the oars as well, and he actually sadly has been suffering a little bit uh, with with seasickness, and and uh, and actually that day had some some heat exhaustion issues. Um, luckily, though, the rest of us have been okay from a seasickness perspective. So Christmas Eve was was a tough tough evening, uh, and then going into Christmas Day, we were hoping that the weather was going to to die down and. We woke up on Christmas morning and and it was still pretty strong winds and everyone was in in a in a pretty bad mood actually. Um, but the conditions changed quite quickly during the day. We got some we got some Christmas carols on. Um, we uh, we a few of us had gifts from 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 family uh, and and actually ended up being being quite a nice quite a nice day. Uh, but we didn't do anything specific. We didn't really take any time off. Um, but yeah, we had some, we had some good Christmas towels and all talked about our favorite Christmas movies and things tonight. And then on New Year's Eve, um, bit of a theme going on here. On, on New Year's Eve actually was, uh, the, the latest storm that we, uh, that we had battled through. Um, so, so that was, uh, definitely a New Year's that we, that we won't forget. Um, so the, I guess in the lead up to that, we were just preparing the boat. Uh, stowing everything away and making sure everything was uh, was tied on uh, in the event that you know, we capsized or had big waves uh, coming across uh, the boat. So New Year's Eve was spent, yeah, as I said earlier, battling. We had winds of between 20 and 24 knots, gusting uh, up to 38 knots. Um, and yeah, I have a very vivid memory of. Being on the rowing uh, on the rowing deck with Dixon, when the winds really picked up, uh, and it was uh, yeah, it was quite a surreal moment. Uh, we were in our we have foul weather gear, which is kind of very heavy duty um, kit uh, to protect us from, from kind of the, the the rain and, and the waves. Uh, so we spent most of New Year's Eve uh, in that. Um, so yeah, it's been pretty eventful uh, Christmas and, and New Year. Good gracious, man. That that sounds intense. Um, definitely a New Year's and a Christmas that you'll never forget, I'm sure. So yeah. so with these storms that come, besides foul weather gear and, you know, just being mentally ready, what else do you have to prepare? And what is that? Is it just much more intense rowing, dip more difficult ways? Is it harder to navigate? How, how do you prepare for that? And what is it like? Yeah, good question. It, it's actually all, it's actually all of those things. 
So um, navigation being being one of the key ones. But you know, the storm, we we were in the most recent storm we we went through. We had very strong kind of northwesterly winds, um, and so you know it meant that we were really struggling to make westerly progress. Progress. Um, obviously, that's the goal to try and uh, keep making westerly progress. So we were trying to manage going going north or south, not directly into the wind, um, and try and make progress. So so we prepared for for that. If we uh, there were a couple of periods where we couldn't make any progress, either the wind was was too strong, uh, or the direction just meant that we we couldn't make westerly progress. And and we actually deployed our our power anchor, uh, which is it's effectively a, I think we may have mentioned before it's, a, it's effectively a parachute um, that you deploy, put into the water, then it fills with water, and then and it will hold you against the wind somewhat. It stops you from drifting too much. So we we did actually deploy that. Um, Jono, Jono is the master of the power anchor and made it look very easy, even in even in some pretty difficult uh, conditions. Uh, so you know we prepared for that and kind of did a did a quick run through um, of it before the storm came in, just to make sure that everything was 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 set up for that. And then and then also to prepare for the storm because because it is tough going, we we rested up a little bit beforehand. Um, you know, didn't 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 push too hard in the 24 hours before, and we made sure that we had we had eaten uh, quite a bit and and had some meals prepared um, so that we we could kind of stay stay fueled during it. It's very easy to get off your shift, or if you spend three or four hours battling wind and waves, it's very easy to just get off and get in the cabin and go straight to sleep. Um, but actually, it's one of the worst things you can do is you, you then kind of depleted of any any energy. Um, you kind of need to fuel yourself with food. So we've been pretty pretty focused on on fueling ourselves as well. How close is the team in first place? And what what kind of conversations are you guys having about trying to over overtake them? Yeah, so the, the team that are ahead of us uh, are called On Shoulders of Giants. They uh, they actually took a slightly more southerly route than we did uh, around two weeks ago. And when we got caught in a storm, they, they didn't. Um, and they they kind of slingshot us ahead by about uh, 30 miles, 30 multiple miles uh, over a 24-hour period. Um, so their southerly route helped them quite a bit. Um, I think what's been really interesting through, through the whole uh, last three weeks is uh, our kind of view on the race and, and in general kind of our approach is, has changed and, and ebbs and flows. Uh, you know, going into this, our, our, our clear goal is to try and win the the race class. Now, the, that team are around 50 nautical miles ahead of us, um, which, given the distance to go and the expected time, two weeks, it's going to take, uh, you know, being honest, it'll take something going wrong with them for us to, to win. And so it's definitely uh, it's definitely been a bit of a coming to terms with the fact that we might not win and actually we, we, we're likely not to win at this stage. But we're, we're still hopeful. Uh, we're still staying positive. We're doing everything we can to get to Antigua as quickly as possible and, and give, our, give ourselves a chance um, if something does happen. Um, but it's something that we've talked about a lot. Uh, you know, we we talk every single every single day about where we are in the race. You know, our approach and strategy to, to how many hours we should be putting on the oars. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a constant focus, and it it, it gives you motivation as well. Um, so Angus Angus Collins um, from Beyond Endurance, he's our, our weather router and our and our rowing coach. He gives us every day um, an update on the weather and he also gives us an update uh, on the, the distances to the other teams and, and our speeds over the last four hour period. Um, so it's, it's every single four hours we get an update on our average speed, uh, which is really motivating and we're, we're fighting for every 0.1 of a, of a, of a knot. So, uh, so that's keeping us going. I'm sure it's bizarre when once you get close enough and you start seeing land, you haven't seen any in so long. Has it felt like longer than three weeks out there? 
Yes and no. Uh, I think, as I said, I think that the days go pretty quickly. Um, and and you know, speaking for myself, I uh, I focus you know just on on the day to day and just getting through each day. So I haven't really focused on on the longer term. So uh, you know, I think I think actually the three weeks, looking back on it now, have gone have gone pretty quickly. And also, some of the days uh, are all the same. Um, you know, obviously, there's no land, there are no landmarks. We, we, all, we all we kind of see a difference in is the sea conditions and the, and the wind. Uh, and so a lot of the days blur into one. And I think even the first week, because of our kind of state of sleep deprivation and, and still trying to, to get, into the, get into the rhythm, um, yeah, I think all of us, have very mixed uh, memories of, of the first, you know, week or 10 days. Um, so, uh, so yeah, actually, you know, if it, now that we're three weeks in, uh, yeah, I think it's gone, it's gone pretty quickly. And I'm sure, I'm sure once we're a week away, we'll all get pretty excited and, and hopefully that will, that will go quickly as well. Absolutely. Uh, well, Todd, I don't want to keep you much longer, but I'd love to know, is there, uh, is there anything interesting you want to share with with folks? Uh, maybe something you've seen, anything floating out in the ocean, or anything you've learned that uh, that folks would find interesting that you, that you wanted to talk about? Uh, well, interestingly, we haven't really we haven't seen very much uh, debris or, or, or rubbish, uh, like trash in the water. We've seen one or two uh, a bit of plastic, uh, but 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 not very much, uh, which has been quite pleasing. We've been very, very uh, focused on making sure everything that we, uh, you know, eat out of, you know, any plastic or any uh, trash, you know, stays on the boat and we take it all the way to Antigua. So it's been a, been a real focus for us. But now, it's like the, the biggest takeaway for me uh, so far has been that, you know, the, the, good, the good times and, and the good days and the good weather, it, it doesn't last forever. Uh, actually, our experience is it hasn't lasted for very long at all. So just, we're trying to enjoy, trying to enjoy the, the the good days and the good weather and, and be present. And equally, the, the kind of dark times and the the really uh, difficult nights or the storms that we've that we've been through, um, they do pass. And you know, whilst it's 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 pretty relentless and and tough when you're in it, um, knowing that it will it will end and we'll all come through as a team and, and be better. Um, on the other side of it has been, has been something I've taken quite a lot of strength on. Todd, well, I know we've got a lot of folks on our side that are that are following along. We're updating each other. We check in the tracker. I check it every day just to see where you guys are. And um, it's just been so cool to watch. You know, for the rest of the journey, we, we really will be pulling for you. We wish you luck and, and, and to stay safe. I know there's probably going to be very challenging times in the next few weeks, but it's all going to be worth it, man. You guys are killing it. It's been so much fun to see. Yeah, well, look, thank you, thank you for the for the support, and you know, everyone, everyone who's kind of following us and following the race. It's uh, it's really, really great to hear that, that people are 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 kind of interested in it and and are kind of uh, checking checking the uh, the YV YV races tracker and, and things like that. It really, really does keep us going. So. Um, Thank, thank you for that, and, and appreciate you taking the time. <laughs> I got, I got a lot more time than you do, Todd. So I appreciate you taking the time, man. All right, we'll we'll let you go. You get some rest, get some food, and we'll we'll talk soon. Yeah, we look forward to to hopefully doing um uh, doing a follow up once we arrive uh, with with all four of us. I'm sure we can. We all have different perspectives on on the experience which uh, which we'd love to share with you so look forward to to speaking again uh, once once we get Frantiga. oh my gosh i i, I can't wait but uh, until then ty y'all be safe and we'll be following you thank you great thanks mason all right see ya bye, bye. first of all Thank you so much for listening. It means the world to us that you choose to listen to this show. If you'd like to help us further, you can leave a review on iTunes, share us with your friends, your family. It goes a long way to grow in the show. You can also support us financially through patreon.com slash adventure sports podcast. Link is in the show notes. And also, if you have an idea of who could be a good guest for the show, we're always looking for people to tell their story uh, about the outdoors or adventure. So if you know someone, please reach out. Email us at info at adventuresportspodcast.com. And until then, get out there and have some fun.